Hey everybody, it's Boardman21, and today's build is going to be the Earthquake, played as a druid. We were pushed into this by Apprentice Corner. If you haven't checked out his video on Earthquake for the Shaman, I recommend that you do. He's running a very low life, very high damage build. The survivability on it... I thought was questionable, but it seems to be working out very well for him, even as a low-life build. I believe he said he ran to 120 waves with it. Um, I'm not sure what level character or what gear he was running, but again, that's all in his video. So if you haven't checked out his channel, I would recommend going over there and seeing that video. Our build, however, is going to be different in a few ways. We're going to have a different earthquake tree. We're going to be running um, not the unique and Zanglius. In fact, we're not going to be running any uniques at all in this build. We're going to be doing similar or maybe even a little bit more damage. However, our damage reduction would obviously be a bit lower, but since we're running a lot more armor protections and not depending on ward, we're also running very, very high leech, which means that we're going to keep our life full pretty much the entire time. And for an earthquake build, which I'm not super fond of, this one actually turned out pretty well, and I feel like it's pretty tanky and it could go really far so far i've only pushed a 100 wave push with it and then we left to go re-gear a bunch of things and redo a bunch of passives but i am pushing it again right now and i will tell you this is a level 100 character and even at 100 waves we were barely taking any damage and it was always full so again you've played the druid you know it's passives it can be a very very tanky character even outside of werebear form because whenever you crit you just get a massive amount of defense and you're always critting now with that, let's go ahead and get into the skills. For skills, we're going to be running Swipe, Summon Frenzy Totem, Earthquake, Summon Spriggan, and Entangling Roots. For Swipe, we're going to be using this for the crit multi and for the crit chance. Also for some leech, as it will be your main skill for damage while you're waiting for mana to regen. So we have 4 points in Way of the Hunt, 4 points in Battle Howl, 1 point in Aspect of the Panther, 1 point in Frenzy, 6 points in Feline Hunter, and 4 points in Apex Predator. For Summon Frenzy Totem, we're using this for the Blood Tether and for some extra attack speed. There are two ways to run this. I will show you our first way and then the second way. The first way is one point in Reinforced Totem to give it a little more life and duration. Two points of Rapidity for increased Frenzy effect. Five points in Grounded for a negative mana cost and for 25 more global melee physical damage one point in dig in so that you have a hundred percent increased damage while tethered and five points in dig deep for that 250 percent increased critical strike chance four points in teutonic reach will increase the range by 120 percent we have two points left you can divide that up between the reinforced totem or put it in rapidity for more increased effect you can also take one point out of reinforced and one point out of the range for four points total and put that all into berserker frenzy and get 200 percent more damage and 200 percent more crit chance but you will take an additional 40 percent damage which pretty much counteracts everything that you're getting from the boar so I wouldn't recommend it unless you are just having no trouble at all sustaining survivability. And then in that case, if you just want straight DPS, I would put it in here. I have ran it with this and it does do good damage and it does increase your crit to much closer to 100%. But you're just not going to be able to go as far with the one shot mechanic if you have that. Because taking 40% more damage is quite a bit. Now for Earthquake, the main skill, we're going to be running this slightly different than the way that Apprentice Corner had it. He was not using the Storm Rift for the melee to spell and he also had into the mana efficiency which means it took quite a few points of rearranging for that but the way that we have it set up is four points in Crushing Wake, four points in Rupture, one point in Seismic Smash, three points in Concussion, one point in Outbreak and the most important one five points in Shatterquake for that increased 150% multiplicative damage against a chilled or frozen enemy. And with the one point in Storm Rift, I think this node is somewhat broken. I don't think it truly converts your melee stuff over to spell, because our melee damage weapon, our Sabna, does way more damage. We're doing this damage with a Sabna and not with the two-handed staff. In fact, you basically lose all damage if you switch over to a staff that has high spell damage. And with Summon Spriggan, we're using this for one 
of two things. The first thing is going to be two points in aura of life, and then the eight points in aura of retribution for that 80% increased damage. And then we're also using it for the solo companion increased armor and protections. So while it's active, you'll be more tanky. Um, that matched with this 80% increased damage is really nice. We also gave it two points in Admiral Vitality, five points in Warding Bark for a bunch of armor and protections for it, and three points in Floral Ascendance. For Entangling Roots, we're using this for both damage and for defense. It's going to give us a lot of healing. So we have five points in Lasting Briar, one point in Reclamation, two points in Groove Master, and the three points in Imbued Sap. This 90% damage does affect you. Four points in Nourish so that you're healed every second, one point in Bountiful Harvest, one point in Mana Bloom, and three points in Fleeting Groove to make it mana efficient. For passives, we're going to be running 20 points in the base class. We have 2 points in Natural Attunement, 5 points in Tempestborn, 8 points in Primal Strength, 6 points in Survival of the Pack, and 1 point in Thornbond to finish her off. In Beastmaster, with over 25 points, we have 5 points in Salvergy, 6 points in Lamprey Teeth, 4 points in Boarheart, 1 point in Ardor's Loyalty, 5 points in Coursing Constitution, 5 points in Primal Strength, and 1 point in Axe and Claw. In the Shaman, we have 10 points with 2 of them in Ancient Stones and 8 of them in Silent Protector. And then 56 points in the Druid Mastered Class. We have 6 points in Blood Claws, 7 points in Wood Lore, 8 points in Spirit Claws, 1 point in Primal Shifter, 6 points in Turtle Form, 5 points in Root Born Wrath, 5 points in Your Same Claws, 1 point in Woodland Bond, 1 point in Natural Duality, 8 points in Your Same Maul, and 8 points in Briar Guard. For items, we're running two types, actually three types of idols, but we're running the aspect of the boar effect increase. We're also running a chance to summon Thorn Totem on hits, and then we just have an increased health with some elemental protection one by two to fill the leftover area. For weapon, we want melee physical damage flat increase and melee damage percent increase. We also want percent chill on hit so that you can chill the enemy so that you can do extra damage to them. I would always at least hit them once before dropping an earthquake on them especially the bosses that's how you get that 150 percent multiplier you just want to make sure they're chilled before you hit them for our jewelry sets we're going to be running set elemental protection and set dodge we're also going to put dodge and protections as the suffixes for the belt boots gloves and helm you're going to have the set glancing blow and then just a bunch of protections with some critical strike avoidance some melee attacks but if you can fit it in there and then for the chest and for the helm um, the chest, we have melee damage increase, we have dodge rating with some vitality. The spell damage, while transformed, is useless. You can put anything else you want there. The two spell damages that we have on this one, um, granted that the percent spell damage not while transformed, the first one for 36% probably helps the skill, but spell damage seems to not be converted, so I don't think it really does. However, you can put whatever you want in both of those categories. If you don't have those, you can go for straight defensive things like elemental protection and, and such. Um, another thing, if you don't want to run the dodge rating or the void protection, I would recommend on the rings and even on the gloves instead of like the necrotic protection, I would recommend getting mana regen as if you get a full 50 or 60% mana regen, you can use earthquake more often. It's not horrible, but it is like a once every five to 10 second skill, you know, or spam three times at once and then wait a while before you can use it again. With that, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys some gameplay.